Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, and as a, remind, a reminder, the proceedings of this meeting will be recorded for information sharing purposes and may be made available on the internet. And this is also as a result of the upcoming FICE presentation from our partners in Charlotte Lake. Uh, Anne, if you'd be so kind as uh, to perform a roll call, please. Thank you. Chair Reed, are you present? Here. Vice Chair Brickman? Here. Councillor Armstrong? Here. Member Bryce? I'm here. Mayor Clarkson sends regrets. Member Forstall, are you present? Uh, present. Member Taylor? I believe Member Taylor is with us. She's just sorting out some technical difficulties. Uh, Member Wright, are you present? I'm here. And Member Dragomir? Here. From staff, we have Lynn Holtz, Economic Development Officer. Present. Donna Taggart, CAO Treasurer. Donna is present on the meeting as well, but I believe is having some audio issues. And Ann Ruth, Deputy Clerk and Recording Clerk, is also present. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. I appreciate that. And, you know, as always, at uh, this time, we uh, ask if anybody has any pecuniary interest to disclose. This is the time uh, to do that. Uh, seeing none, moving on. Approval of the agenda for today. Uh, I need an motion to approve. Anyone? Anyone? Greg? A seconder? Second. Okay, Councillor Armstrong. Thank you, Carol. And uh, a show of hands for a vote. All those in favor? Okay, please note that is uh, carried. And thank you. Number four, adoption of the minutes. Uh, I need a motion to adopt. Motion to adopt. Uh, thank you. A seconder, please. Seconder. Carol, thank you. Show of hands, please. All those, all those in favor of adopting the minutes of the previous meeting. Okay, carried. Thank you very much. And I am back, Dave. Um, yeah. But I, I've tried everything in my power. I cannot get the webcam up. So well, not, um, not, not to not to worry, Rain. I appreciate with what you've got going on today that you can be here for this. It's not uncommon for us to have. Uh, people in just uh, audio only, so not, not a big deal. Uh, if you're here, I know you have to leave during the meeting. If there's a vote, uh, we'll just uh, ask you um, audibly uh, to, to provide an answer, okay? Okay, sounds good, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we all know we have a FICE meeting today just before we get to uh, numbers five and six. So we are going to try, we'll take a, 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 a sort of turnover period sometime after uh, uh, 3.50 as we get close to 4 o'clock to let uh, our a partner group come in and join us, the few that are coming to present for us. Uh, but that's, uh, that's we'll talk about it in a little while, but I just want to make sure we can get through everything today. There's not a whole lot on here. There's a few things I want to discuss and a couple of opportunities, but uh, just reminding everybody, I recognize uh, Greg's probably got to leave before 5.30 and Raina uh, for 5.00. And we just want to make sure we still have quorum for the rest of the way. I mentioned it to everybody else, but it is important that we have it. So if you're here, I hope you can stay for the for the duration outside of uh, Greg and Raina. Thank you. Okay, 6.1, updates from the chair. So FICE, I just want to talk about it just uh, briefly. It's the first impressions community exchange. Uh, we delivered ours uh, on uh, um, earlier this week on uh, Monday or Tuesday? Monday. Monday. I can't remember. It's been a, been a week. But uh, I think it was fairly well received. It, it's an interesting process to go through. And I think that's what I'm hoping everybody here understands that the process is. I know a few of us have been more intimately involved than others. Uh, but when Jerry started this off, we, we were basically exchanging information with one another, trying to get information about the other's community, preparing ourselves to take roles. And we go there, we go, we take our sort of uh, mental and visual and, and, and other... Uh, pictures of, of what we what we see and feel when we go to the community and we relate it back to this rather large document that has a whole bunch of important components to it that they uh, prov that provides the, the receiving community the opportunity to reflect on where they are. 
And why that's important in the process, and I want everybody to know, for those of you that were able to attend the previous meeting, it was apparent to us as we were going through a lot of the, uh, the data and the commentary from people that uh, Sharper Lake was in a, in a unique situation in that they had done this approximately 20 years ago. And so they're now in a bit of a revisionary process. They've gone back to reevaluating where they are in the community, asking people to, to you know, to, to see where they are. And what we kept finding in some of the data and some of the comments was a bit of a dichotomy. So really for them, the question that has come out of, the, out of this whole process was, what do we want to be? They already moved forward with the things to uh, fix up the little village and, and make it better connected with the communities around them. They're still working more on that, but they're at the, the tipping point now. Is this going to be a business of, of tourism area or is it going to be a little village that serves some of the tourism and also primarily the, the residents uh, and, and, and uh, those that use the area on a regular basis? And I think today uh, when we hear from everybody here, I will talk about it a little bit later. Try to have that in your in your mind too when they're delivering things. There might be a few comments in there, although it's supposed to be constructive criticism. It is really truly an opportunity for us to hear in, about what other people see and feel when they come to one of our communities in Trent Lakes. So, uh, but for, for, from uh, them to all of us, they, they wanted to pass on appreciation for all the work that everybody did, uh, as would I uh, like to say that as well. Um, and uh, I think that, I hope that we can learn something from what the delivery uh, process will, uh, will expose to us today. Uh, so the process itself is they will be delivering, we'll do a little brief introduction, then they will deliver some uh, uh, detailed information on us. The package is very detailed, it's very descriptive what you're supposed to do, there'll be a lot of repetition in it. Uh, it should take 45 minutes to an hour, I would think, and then we'll have sort of a, uh, hoping we have enough time left for a bit of a, a Q&A sort of situation. Uh, we had a really good one when we did it with them. Uh, uh, but uh, I, I do ask that we keep on topic with a question and keep the questions as brief as possible so that we can utilize as much of the time that we have with them uh, to hear uh, what their responses would be uh, without sidebars. We, we did a pretty good job on that with their side. I'm hoping we can do the same uh, when they do that with us. Um, and I think that's that's the last that's the last thing I want to say about Feist for today. But I think does anybody have any questions about what's going to go on this afternoon? Um, I know John and Carol were a part of the previous, so they they sort of know and Christine uh, know what's going on. Um, so if anybody has any questions, uh, go ahead. Okay, seeing none. Six point one, the, uh, the community improvement plan. I had said I know. Uh, Greg, I reached out to you before about this, and I know everybody uh, at one time or other uh, I've sent emails to. Unfortunately, we got so busy this week with FICE, we weren't able to um, to do this. But we are, uh, Carol uh, and I have exchanged uh, some uh, emails previously. I know Christine and I have. Just looking for anybody on the committee that wants to spend an hour to an hour and a half just once to come out with uh, either myself or Christine and then we might make another pair and we have a little package to bring around to the businesses to see what, what to explain to them what the community improvement uh, program is and what uh, the eligibility for assistance or, or some form of loan or financial support is. And we'll go through it in detail prior to when we go out. But I wanted to put it out there to everybody at the meeting just to know this is one of the few remaining items that we really need to uh, address and get out there in short order. Uh, I'm pretty open, I'm willing, if some, uh, I will email you in, all individuals, somebody wants to come out one morning, I will make the effort to, to come out with you so that you get out to see some of the people and, and uh, uh, I'm sure Christine would do the same and Carol, anybody that knows what the program is um, so that we can just get it out to all of the businesses. That would be wonderful. Uh, six one, number three on this, succession planning. This is something that I've always been very involved in. We are coming near the end of our term. Uh, FICE will be the last big program that we're pushing forward here. And what comes out of this, this, uh, this return visit is uh, a review and then we move on to a planning phase. And that will be part of what we probably pass on either to our EDO or the next group here. But I want everybody out there, number one, first to think about uh, if you do know people in the community that might be interested in, in assisting through some time in, in helping this committee, if in, in fact it still exists next time around, or getting involved in vo volunteerism in this area, in the community. Uh, I'm putting that out there because all of us at the end of this term 
Some may reapply and get in, some may not, but I think it's time to start looking. And whoever you know out there you think might be good to help uh, you know, move the ball forward for uh, an economic uh, uh, advisory group here in this, this municipality, I would really appreciate if you start looking now so that we can have someone to, uh, some people that are willing to apply and hopefully get the position uh, next time around. Uh, number four and 6.1. So remaining committee work. We started out with some pretty uh, lofty goals. I know um, a few of you advised us it might be a little bit too much to, to handle, but I think we've moved along pretty good. And I, I wanted to just, I don't want to bore you, but it, just to get us back on track for this last little push, our original goals were providing long-term direction, uh, being a part of community revitalization, retaining and attracting businesses and residents, communications and advertising, customer service modeling, and work plan development and budget submissions. Now those are pretty heady titles, but we've gone through most of them in different areas and, and we, we did simplify the approaches to four themes for 2022. And that was uh, what we'll talk about shortly, the completion of the green space and street escape master uh, plan items. Um, we've stayed laser focused on that. It's moving along quite well. Uh, Christine will update everybody on that shortly. <laughs> resource and data uh, resource and data gathering, which of course uh, FICE is a part of, uh, as well as uh, uh, any of the studies that come out through our economic development officer. And uh, certainly when we get into the next component, we're talking about long-term um, planning, uh, economic and even planning for, for overall for the municipality. This is all part of it. And we've, we've been uh, committing to that so far. So I think we're doing all right there. The development of an economic strategy, our EDO and, and uh, Carol were able to uh, get that ball rolling through council. So, we're, you know, I think we're, we're well on the way to moving that one forward. And our relationships with community partners, we're still working on those items, but we have been able to make some really good headway in a couple of, uh, well, more than a couple in most areas on that. So we're, we're working towards those items. On specific items, Odenang Park, the CIP, FICE, uh, a uh, property acquisition uh, maintenance and dispersal document which i have most of that completed so I, I'll, I should be able to present that in the not too distant future and then we had some other local things that we've moved over to following years uh like this we'll, we'll put it in a package from a uh, passport local dining discover trent lakes those type of items so our committee is, is still going to have some stuff to do over the summer months but i it will not be as as intense as it has been certainly for a few of us the past month and a half uh, that's for sure. So if anybody has any, anybody have any comments on, on what I brought up here, just trying to give a little bit of straight State of the Union address to everybody and sort of where we are with things and and uh, just a few uh, items that we have upcoming. Okay, uh, 6.2, the Community Improvement Plan Subcommittee. Dave? Up yeah. Yes. Sorry, uh, it's Carol. Sorry, Carol. <laughs> uh, just I a did question. I know that the... Uh, uh, that's okay. Um, I know that the PRCAC went through uh, a team assessment of how their committee has performed against their objectives throughout yes. the last four years, kind of to, you know, one, as much lay the groundwork for the next committee as to do a little bit of, you know, soul searching to say, what did we accomplish that we set out to do? Is that something that you envision this committee doing? I do. I don't know if it'll be the same that that uh, what what Bob would have done. I know Bob's a very detail-oriented gentleman. I really respect that in him. Uh, I, I I will consider that, uh, Carol. I have looked at that. I think right now, to be honest, I've been putting in 50-hour weeks on this the last while, and I'm probably a little bit burnt out to give you a, a fair uh, assessment on that. I'm being being quite honest. Uh, I think it would be valuable, so I support it, and uh, I think I think we can commit to that. Sure. Uh, I'll I'll talk to Bob about that. Bob TV. I think that's doable. It's a good idea. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, so the commu uh, community improvement plan subcommittee update. Uh, I've reached out a couple of uh, local area businesses, uh, just letting them know that uh, we will be coming around in the next uh, couple of weeks to send that out to them. And that's basically where we are right now. So uh, after this meeting today and over the weekend, I'll make sure I get emails out and we'll try to find specific times and dates where we can just go out, like I said, for an hour, maybe have a coffee, say hellos, and and uh, and talk to a few people, and and move on from there. Uh, 
Uh, you, oh, yes. And Christine, do you have anything to add to that for the CIP? You've got the green space part, right? We'll probably talk about that or share computers. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Just. Okay, great. Okay, I just wanted to uh, give a, a quick update on where we're at, just because it's a standing topic. Um, as you know, FICE has been our priority for the last uh, month since we got together, but I did uh, want to just keep us uh, this in our preview. If you want to go ahead, please, Anne. So from a CIP update, Dave was giving the, uh, the specifics as to what we're planning to do over the next uh, week or so, at least uh, prior to our next EDAC meeting anyways, so we'll have some um, updates to bring back. But we did do a follow-up with Adele. Um, Adele is responsible for the program overall, and uh, she indicated that there has not been any inquiries regarding the CIP program for a long time, and nothing is currently in progress. So this aligns exactly with what Dave and I were uh, thinking is that, you know, we haven't heard anything. We didn't know whether perhaps there was some rumblings or stuff going on that just hadn't come forward to EDAT. So this confirms to us that it is time for us to go out into the community, knock on doors, and to um, either remind people about the program or at a you know, minimum, we're introducing the program and ourselves. It's the, getting in front of the local businesses is, a, is beneficial you know, all the time uh, for lots of reasons. We can give them all kinds of updates as to what uh, we've been able to accomplish last year, what we have ahead of us, and then provide the, the brochures, the pamphlets, and talk through any of the, uh, the specifics to how the program works. Because uh, some people think it's like just a grant, and of course it's not a grant. It, requ it, it requires um, an application process it requires them to commit uh, the specifics on what the uh, what their project plan is, whether it's a um, a facade or if it's a landscaping uh, update. It has to be reviewed, has to be approved, and then the project along the way needs to also meet certain criteria. And then at the end, it will only be approved as far as fin final reimbursement if they've met all of the specifics along the way for that project. Next, please, Anne. Uh, I have this slot here for any updates. I haven't received any updates uh, specific to the playground from the last time from Dylan, but we do know that Dylan is deeply, uh, has this in his preview. He's out getting the RFPs and quotes. Um, as far as the shoreline gardens go, I do know that they were starting to do the work on that, but I haven't seen it. I don't know if anybody's driven through town and might be able to say that they have. Um, the bicycle repair station has been ordered, but it's not been received yet. Or been received, it's not in place. Oh, it's sorry. It's been received, it's not in place. Okay, it's been received, which is great news. It just hasn't been installed yet. Um, and then the same with the pavilion, no updates yeah. from the last time, uh, because we actually specifically don't have uh, budget monies for this, this year to go ahead with that. Uh, and the same with the shore uh, viewing deck. And the red chair has been received. And as far as I know, it's uh, ready to be installed. I expect it would be probably going in at the same time that the bicycle repair station would be installed. And the only other topic I should have put on there, uh, sorry, Anne, is the, um, well, I think we're going to have to include on next meeting is specific to when we've obtained the approval from council to have the um, specific fund set aside for the Odenang Park and what how we can proceed with uh, basically letting the residents, businesses, public know that we do have that fund and how best we can try and capture some monies for 2022. Uh, next page, please. I did want to share um, just some uh, things that we have made final progress. These projects that you're looking at have been literally two years in the pro in progress. Some of it is COVID. Uh, some of it is just really hard to get um, you know things done 
when there's multiple requirements as far as approvals, things being built, picked up and put in place, um, there's a ripple effect that happened. This is uh, our book exchange library, 90% ready. It, we'd see on the left-hand side in the picture there, those are actually books. There used to be five books, now there's three. Um, I know there's more now because uh, my neighbor just put a whole pile in there. Um, we had our annual general meeting a week ago and it, uh, people were very pleased with it. And we're gonna paint the bottom uh, legs there to match the black. But again, just a positive kind of fun thing for the <laughs> community to be able to share. Um, something happened, I just wanted to go back one. Thank you, Ann. Uh, and that is the chair in place at White's Beach. Um, you can see we're putting fun stickers and or they're actually decals that are on the, the chairs. I've got more to go on the chair. It'll be a similar look that we have over there on the book exchange library. Just makes it a little bit uh, funner. And the bottom image there where I've got Crystal Lake, that is a uh, going to be turned into a metal sign that will go on the book exchange. And then we're gonna have one uh, larger and similar that's gonna go on the chair. I want uh, you guys to think about what that looks like. And that would be the kind of the vision for what we would have for Buckhorn. So instead of it saying Crystal Lake, it will say Buckhorn. And I've also got an image of um, perhaps bucks or trees, that type of thing that um, would really look nice on the chair. And then just the lower image there showing what it looks like going in with the, the welcome sign with the all the plants and the gardens all cleaned up. Um, as you can see, it looks very welcoming to the community in, in uh, Galway. That's all I had. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Excuse me, Dave, if I may. Yes. Uh, just in regard to the RFP for the playground, I can advise that the RFP closed on uh, June the 8th, and there is a report coming forward to Council at next Tuesday's meeting on June the 21st, uh, recommending award. Oh, okay, great. All right. Thank you, Anne, for that. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Okay, uh, moving on, 6.3. Ann, where are we here? Yep, there we go. Um, this item was requested to be included on the agenda by the Economic Development Officer, so I'll uh, allow her or refer to her to speak to. Is Lynn muted? Yeah, I can't hear anything. Yeah, I can't. I can't hear anything. Yeah, I'm muted. I was just uh, trying to pull it up so that it's a little closer, okay. and I can read it a little better. <laughs> um, so this was basically sent to council and the mayor, uh, and I asked uh, Anne if we might include it here because I thought maybe one of you might be interested in attending this forum. And uh, it says that at the bottom that if you wanted to attend the forum, uh, that you can email any of those people about uh, your attendance and participation. So it's basically, but the economic, it says the economic contributions from rural communities are integral to Canada's success, rural areas, are home to many key industries such as manufacturing, forestry, agriculture, and industry. And so basically they're looking for um, ways to encourage rural communities to receive a uh, fair uh, funding from the government because often it's the cities that are put ahead or the larger towns that are put ahead of the smaller communities. And so um, it sounds like they are going to convene a town hall for this. So that's basically all it's there for, is just for information for anyone who might be interested in it. Okay. Uh, so Lynn, what I, I mean, we can, um, I can put this out in an email to everybody later if anybody's interested to, uh, 
to join in. Um, so I, I appreciate that being brought in uh, to us and Lynn for explaining that. Thank you. Do we have anybody interested right off the bat with the uh, with the comment with the uh, knowledge of this? No pressure. No pressure. I don't see any hands today. Okay. I think it's because we're on a not on a regular meeting date here. Um, okay. Uh, moving on. Dave, could we just get a motion to receive on that? Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, can I get a uh, motion, please, to receive? John, seconder. Carol, and a show of hands. All those in favor? Hey, Anne, please record that's uh, unanimous. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I guess we'll go with Gabby first. Gabby, PKED update. Really uh, glad you you are joining us today too. Thanks, Gabby. Okay, so uh, two big projects, which are long ones. One is the third uh, business count survey. It's going well. We had to stop or to rethink a little bit uh the week after the storm because we were supposed to be in duro Damar and they didn't have uh, electricity for quite a while anyway back on track i'm doing the farm uh, survey and it actually helps me to understand and to learn a lot of things and i'm starting to see trends and, and things that I didn't know before. Now I, I, I can really tell you that this business count, it's a very useful thing if you if you add all the information, apart from the statistical data. It's speaking with a lot of people and I'm hearing people venting, people angry, uh, people retiring and not interested a lot of, of interesting things about that one it's going on till i think mid august and then we're gonna provide reports like uh, the years before to each township uh, another one is the path uh, pathway to prosperity prosperity program the one where we're uh, training people for general labor agriculture uh, line cooks and manufacturing. So we're going to have the cohorts uh, graduating uh, starting the end of, of this month, I think, or mid next month, and looking for, for people who are interested in, uh, in hiring. And Greg, I actually, uh, you sent me an email a while ago when I didn't know, I didn't have any information back then, but if you're interested or whoever is, is interested in the light, in light books, in tourists, please let me know and now I can, I can tell you more. Apart from the fact that Lynn actually shared in the Facebook group, uh, a general presentation and the path to go to our website to uh, to enroll if you're interested to become a, an employer. So these are the two big projects and rest were rethinking, reorganizing the business development department because we have two people who left the, this uh, year. So in the business development so now we're, we're re rethinking how we can do more with less <laughs> if if that's possible because it's hard to to find quality applicants that's that's one reality everywhere and i think that's it for now Thanks, thanks, Gabby. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Gabby? I, I do actually, Gabby. The uh, you you commented about um, like listening and hearing from people because uh, I've heard some similar refrains myself lately. I just want to make sure you said uh, you know some people were angry, some people I guess are a little disenfranchised or whatever, and then you said retired people uh, sort of not interested. Is that a common refrain? It's 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 really has to do with farmers. 
which people farmers don't retire as such yeah but there is a, a point where they cannot work and they probably rent the land to neighbors and somebody else now the farms are still in their names so uh it's it's a, because otherwise we don't survey retired people we survey businesses i got you so how can we get the retired people the the way we, we were discussing before that's another tricky thing to to do if you come up with a strategy let us know because that, that you is know what? I, 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 I have a friend uh, in Guelph, I think, who started a, a business a face group through a face group page meetings, in person meetings. So they have once, uh, I think now once a month meetings to to have a coffee together or to have a beer together. And that might be something as simple as that. If there is somebody willing to start something and, and through the social media, ask retire active people or, or formulating in such a way and people will come to socialize and hopefully will will start to get engaged. Gabby. Hopefully. Anyone else? Yeah, Dave, uh, Gabby. Have you thought about uh, reaching out to some of the retirees organizations, whether it be Maru or Omers or uh, QP, OPSU, any of those uh, type of uh, organizations to see if they can reach out to their retired members? Maybe that uh, that's just on the public sector. There's, I'm sure, lots of private sector out there as well that uh, uh, that people are retired or on pensions. They may respond. Excellent oh, point. Yeah, that's a very good idea. Yeah, thank you. I think I even think Omer's might even have some type of working uh, group there where they uh, uh, getting retirees involved in activities. So I have to go back and look at that. That's a very good, uh, very good point, John. Very, and a, a potential uh, uh, place to go uh, for that reason for people to be able to uh, to open up that discussion. Yeah, because I know uh, Maru is quite, uh, it's M-A-R-O-O, -O, I forget the, what the acronym is, but uh, they're quite organized as well. They could reach out to, perhaps to some of their members. Yeah, great idea. I like that. Yeah. yeah. That helps, Gabby, I hope? Yep, yep. Good. Uh, Christine, you had your hand up? No, I was just going to add on to that, that that's a similar discussion that we that Terry Reese brought to us uh, at last uh, month's meeting, that we did ha uh, talk quite a bit, and I did have a follow-up discussion with him also, that the retirees is a, you know, big black hole. So it, Terry himself was also trying to find a way to connect with them, find out what they're doing, find out what they want to do, if you know, we all know that they're not all just sitting around lounging. None of us do that. Um, I can attest to that being a so-called retiree. So um, there definitely is this uh, gap out there to try and figure out how to connect in with retirees in all different uh, sectors of our community. Yeah, point well taken. I think uh, one of the even years ago, I know when I left work, it was sort of one of the great untapped resources. There's a lot, a lot of countries around the world where actually that is organized already. Uh, in some of the Scandinavian countries, I believe you'll see a bit of that. So um, it's good on you for working towards that, Gabby. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, next, our EDO, Lynn Holtz. Lynn? Okay, so um, the RFP for the Economic Development, Tourism and Recovery Strategic Plan has been awarded to McSweeney and Associates Consulting. They're out of Ottawa, um, and this committee will uh, be uh, included as a stakeholder and kept apprised of all the activities and progress. We've just only kind of had initial little meet and greets. I don't have their work plan as yet. They're a very experienced group. Uh, they have about, I think, 
20 years of experience and a, and a real dynamic mix in the project team of uh, people who are more older and more experienced and they have a municipal background um, and then kind of the younger generation as well coming in. And they've done extensive work to uh, in, in strategic planning, economic development and tourism for uh, communities that are very similar to ours. And, and they had a very extensive portfolio of where they've been working. Uh, towns like Schreiber up in the north, Sioux Lookout, Tomogamy, Cobalt, uh, Lake of Bays, Gravenhurst, uh, Espanola, so those smaller communities, and then some of the larger areas uh, as well, like because they're out of Ottawa, they've done Ottawa, they've done Northumberland County, Oshawa and Durham region, um, and then Cornwall, you know, Cornwall is, uh, I don't know if anyone's been there recently, but they've really undergone quite a, a, a transition from where they were kind of the dirty pulp and paper into uh, uh, aside from the fact that they're really busy like it's just amazing how beautiful Cornwall looks now um, so we're very excited to be working with them like I said I have yet to receive their complete work plan uh, I can see that I did get something from them today uh, a draft of the plan will be coming to uh, this committee probably late summer maybe early fall uh, for its review and comments and then uh, I'll, I'll likely have more to share in the future once we have initiated the project and got into it a little more and established some dates and some when the working session will be and the consultations with the stakeholders and how those are going to be conducted. And there will likely be uh, also a public survey conducted. The Boathouse Boutique in Buckhorn is up for sale. It's kind of sad because they were one of the brave ones who came into Buckhorn uh, during COVID and converted the Purple House uh, into a commercial um, store down below and apartments above. And they did amazing work with the landscape and the, and the overall uh, facade improvements for that building. I have informed uh, PKED uh, of that property because um, sometimes they get interested developers who are looking for uh, those kinds of properties that are already somewhat established and unfortunately now that would make the third property in Buckhorn that is up for sale Cody Inn the Ron Windover property and now the Boathouse Boutique and they are all at basically over just over a million dollars so I don't know what kind of uh, money is still out there for investments and investors and developers, but all three of them, they're looking for that kind of money. Um, I don't have any other real updates. PKED did conduct their third annual business count. They, I think the first year they conducted the count, they had 26 people in, or businesses in Trent Lakes. I think last year they had 46, and they may even tagged on a few more at the end. They conducted their count in um, Trent Lakes from the week of uh, the 16th to the 27th. Sorry, that's two weeks, I think. 16th to the 27th, and they were going out in, um, there was four in the team and basically working in groups of two. And we probably won't get the results from that count probably until maybe the end of summer again and could be fall because they've uh, been experiencing a real shuffle in their um, in their staff. Uh, Suzanne McCrimmon, the director of business development for PKD, resigned her position and she has gone to North Simcoe. So um, her last day was June the 10th and uh, on behalf of myself and the uh, council and the committee, I did wish her well and thanked her for, um, for all the work that she has done for us in our area. Uh, I don't think that they're advertising. I had asked Gabby about that when I, when I was down at uh, uh, Venture North about replacing her and uh, it sounds like they're gonna take a bit of a breather. It's always an opportunity when some people move on to kind of think about your future and where you want to go and if you want to do um, maybe kind of a reshuffle of things. Uh, I met with Eva Rees and Eleni uh, Gagowski, uh, the Workforce Development Projects Associates for PKED at the Venture North building. 
on June the 6th about the new Pathways to Prosperity program. I had heard about this in April, but then it kind of went silent, so I didn't really know what was happening with it. And then uh, Eleni reached out to me and she said, you know, would I like to meet? And I said, boy, would I? And I went down there and this is an exciting program because it's very much in line with a lot of the stuff that we've discussed about uh, the problems with our workflow or force and um, attaining and re retaining and, and, um, and keeping staff. Uh, so what else do I have on that? Because um, I wanted to kind of explain it a little bit. So Pathways to Prosperity matches local employers with local host employers, or sorry, matches local <laughs> employees with local host employers. So Sir Sanford Fleming uh, will be providing a four-week training, co uh, training course in one of four sectors. And uh, the four sectors are manufacturing, construction, food service, um, and agriculture. And following that, there'll be a five week paid work placement. Sir Sanford will provide um, training such as WIMIS and other um, labor safety and some basic equipment training. So that basically when the employee moves into the hands-on experience with the host employer, they will basically be ready to go to work and, and start uh, gaining that uh, experience. The host employers uh, at the conclusion of the five weeks that the uh, employee will be with them can submit and uh, be reimbursed for up to 50% of the uh, placement employees' wages. And then if it works out between the employer and the employee, and both are in agreement, my understanding is that they can be hired in, uh, like permanently by the, um, by the uh, host employer. So I've put it out onto Facebook uh, on our network, business networking group. And I also sent it out by email to, um, uh, in our news bulletin, our little business bulletin that I send out by MailChimp every once in a while. So that's kind of really exciting. Maybe what I'll do is I'll photocopy one of the posters and that and I can send that out to everybody. So you just have that information in hand. Um, at the request of Dave at the start of today's meeting, I've sent an email to Joe Reese um, from Peterborough and uh, Kawartha's Tourism regarding an update on the regional wayfinding signage and where that project is. I think it began in 2019 and they were basically at about phase three into that project. Uh, and I'm, I'm just not sure. And I, I don't even want to surmise where it is at now. And I think that's all I have. I tried to be kind of quick and, and I have um, been reaching out to other businesses been able to add 10 businesses to the online business directory on the web page and I'm hoping to continue with with that outreach and that's it thanks Lynn uh, oh, go ahead no I was just saying it's short and quick oh no I appreciate that thank you any questions from anyone uh, again I have a quick one just when you the, the pathways to prosperity it can be either you and Gabby because we're going to go on a, a brief uh, recess I, here for a second while the others come in from Sharber Lake. But the um, that the uh, Pathways to Prosperity, do we know how many local businesses match up with that? Like how many how many people uh, have become a part of that? Or, or is there a way to know that, Lynn? Uh, I can find that out. I can just uh, ask um, probably Eva or Eleni um, how many they've had sign up for it so far and how many host employers um, yeah, because I, I can't remember them ever giving me any figures to that effect. And I don't know if they'll be able to provide me with a breakdown as to how many might be from Trent Lakes. Or maybe even Gabby can grab it because she's she's in that office. So. Yeah, that, maybe Gabby. Gabby, just I can, I, can, yeah. I can ask, but it's a work in progress. So they are outreaching heavily and waiting for people to sign up every day so numbers hopefully will change and grow and it's not only peterborough in the program it's peterborough kawarta lakes i think is it northumberland it's a slightly bigger area mm -hmm. but i can i can ask them to to tell me what they have in terms of uh, of local people 
uh, specifically Trent Lakes because I'm I'm not sure if they have any yet. So okay. I just I appreciate that. I just wanted uh, to look for it because if we're not being effective enough, I mean we're in a time and era where people are going, like, ah, I don't want to do any extra or whatever because of what we've been through the last few years. But if we can help, uh, certainly uh, connect or make people aware of the program in some way, we will help do that for sure. Yeah. So we're going to be pushing all the information that PKED is going to be releasing on the program, and then in in addition to that, I can kind of keep pushing it basically to our businesses that I might think. Uh, would be interested. Like I said, it is it is limited to the four sectors, uh, at least at this time. And I think the reason that it's with those four sectors is because uh, they're anticipating that there's going to be a lot more help coming in for tourism because tourism has already been identified as an area that may be wanting, but also there's a, a lack of skilled workforce in those four sectors. Um, and I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll send out what documents I do have. They have a, a, a really good partnership. It's basically um, an Employment Ontario program. So you will see it popping up across all of the province of Ontario. And uh, PKET is basically presenting it for our area. But it's also um, funded in part by the Government of Canada and the Government of Ontario. And there's a lot of the collaborative stakeholders that, that we all know and we love locally also involved in it. So it's City of Quartha Lakes, Peterborough, Fleming College is involved, the um, Workforce Development Board in Peterborough is involved. Um, just trying to pull them out of my head. I think the YMCA Youth Opportunities, I think they are involved. EPC, which is the Employment Planning and Consulting, I think is their, their, their C in their thing. They're involved in it. And Agilic has also signed up. And uh, there may be a couple that unfortunately I'm missing. But it's basically looking for people who are underemployed, which means that they may only be getting 20 hours um, a week of work. So it's to help them gain uh, skills to advance themselves. And it's also looking for uh, people who are basically either looking to switch into a better job or are unemployed. And they're looking for primarily, you know, around that college age level, um, not necessarily kind of the summer student sort of uh, kind of thing. Okay. But yeah, they're they're going to basically by going into Sir Sanford Fleming, they're basically in a four week program, they're getting some college education and development. So I think it's a very exciting program. Well, we, we will. I, I would like to keep an eye on that uh, as well. And if there's any involvement for us to just help move it along for sure. Um, I appreciate that, Lynn and Gabby. Thank you. Uh, and at this time I did, as I said earlier, I kind of planned a, a brief, I would call it myself a recess. Uh, just as we start inviting the Charbot Lake people in, is that okay? Or do I need to announce something? Or do you need to announce something for the start between now and four o'clock? Uh, that's fine. You can call a five minute recess, Dave. Uh, if all of the members could turn off their webcams and mute themselves, and if they could just rejoin us shortly before four, and uh, we'll just ensure that the Charbot Lake folks get connected. That's great. Okay, thanks everybody. Everybody heard that. So we'll, uh, we'll reconvene uh, in about five minutes. Thank you. That's Annie. You're welcome, Anne. Oh, and you're we, muted. Can't we can't hear you. You're still muted there. There you we said go. It's, it's pretty black outside here. I hope I stay connected. <laughs> yeah, I think you're getting what we got about an hour ago. It did last about 15 minutes, but then it did pass through. So hopefully you're all good. And I I see Adriana there. Welcome, Adriana. And Karen Hello. as well. 
Yes. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Karen. Hi. Hi, Jerry. So before we officially reconvene here, I just want to uh, make sure, do we know your the final numbers for the group that are here today, uh, Adriana? I don't. Uh, I know a couple folks had to send their regrets. Um, so I don't know the number representing like the group that went to Sharba Lake besides myself and Anne, who you've already met, and Karen, who uh, was kind of coordinating this with us. And I think Derek Redmond is on. Okay, well, I appreciate that because I know obviously the delivering uh, group is going to be smaller uh, than the listening group, that's for sure. But uh, I guess, Anne, at this time, are you okay? Can we uh, reconvene and I'll, I'll uh, read out the announcement? Absolutely. All right, I'd like to uh, reconvene the meeting, please. Okay, and uh, the proceedings of this meeting will be recorded for information sharing purposes and may be available on the internet. Uh, so unless there's any objections to that, and seeing none. Well, from our, our uh, to our, our friends uh, in uh, Sharbot Lake and uh, Karen at, at Omafra, thank you very much for, uh, for all the work that you've done and, and the presentation you're gonna give us today. Uh, I don't know, Karen, at this point, do you want me to just turn it over to you like we did the other day and you can, Maybe if you want to do your introductions and that kind of stuff, would you like that? Sure. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much, Dave, and thank you very much to uh, Trent Lakes and uh, the team from Charbot Lake uh, for participating in this process. Um, I know uh, when we talked the other day, and I'm not sure who all was on the other day um, on the Charbot Lake side, uh, like for that presentation from uh, the Buckhorn team. Uh, so much, some of this may be repetitive. Um, you know, first impressions, uh, I'm with uh, Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, for those who don't know me. And uh, this program is one that we have um, uh, developed ourselves and have been implementing probably for the last, um, I'm going to say 12 to 15 years. And there are hundreds of community, communities, rural communities across Ontario who have used this program and use this program to the extent that um, it often um, kind of paves a way for uh, some economic development planning, some validation of economic development um, uh, priorities. And uh, it's just a great opportunity to get the community together in different ways to um, work on a project such, such as this. And I'm really grateful to both teams for all the work that you've put in so far um, and recognizing that uh, there have been a few hiccups along the way with um, uh, both groups and, uh, uh, you know, which happens. Uh, it's a pretty normal thing to happen. And but we're here and, uh, you know, we're we're having this conversation today. So I'm really grateful. And, um, at, uh, you know, saying all that, um, I think I'll just turn it over to Adriana because I think, Adriana, you're leading the charge today. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Sure, I'll unmute. Believe it or not, I haven't given a presentation in a few months. But when I was with Charbot Lake, it was very regular, uh, working with our downtown revitalization committee. Um, so I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited. I can imagine you guys are excited just to hear this fresh perspective. Um, I still work in the tourism industry, and it it never gets you know we we sometimes are so used to our day-to-day -day surroundings and our drive and, and our downtown that it's so nice and refreshing to see it from the perspective of visitors. So I'm excited to be able to offer that back to you today on behalf of our touring group. So uh, a lot of the reflections you see here aren't just a representation of mine, so we're kind of all mixed in there from our various viewpoints. Um, so I think that's really all I need to report. And I just wanna reiterate what Karen mentioned um, having worked on the Charbot Lake downtown revitalization, um, when I was catching up on all the background documents, you know, I was thrown into a, a role which was amazing in terms of a contract with Omafra, and then I saw all like the background work that went into it, which included uh, Charbot Lake having gone through a community exchange in 2011. So having that kind of documentation, those <clears throat> types of observations, really helps with any type of funding applications you might be working towards in the future. So you should all give yourselves a pat on the back for taking part and being engaged in this process because it's such a community 
uh, driven initiative, any type of uh, community building or improvement. So keep up the good work, even through all the hardships and weather, my goodness. Um, so I hope we don't lose our connection. <laughs> but uh, again, if we do uh, the presentation, uh, you can always you can always flip through that. Thanks, so Adrian. That's all from my opening, but I'll let you guys ask any initial questions, and then you can let me know when you're ready to actually start flipping through the presentation. Okay, I think we're just about ready. I, I wanted to preface a couple of things. We do have two members that have to leave during this uh, today. Uh, Greg, I would imagine, be leaving sometime just before 5:30, and Raina will be gone around five. We'll have the rest of the group here, so we are looking forward to it. And uh, definitely comment on uh, working through all of the difficulties between pandemic, weather, and stuff. I know Jerry started this process for us, and he, he really worked hard on it. And you know, your own businesses sometimes interfere with this stuff, and you have to pass it on. And I think in our case here, we're lucky. We have a good group of people, and I'm sure you guys do too. So we're we're ready for you and, and ready to move on. And uh, uh, I'm sure Anne and you've worked out how you're gonna gonna manipulate the screen. So Adriana, up to you. Go ahead. All right, and I just want to confirm it's not Anne Howes that's doing any uh, of the back end work. I don't want her to be frightened, thinking that she's supposed to be clicking away. <laughs> it's a different Anne. <laughs> just before Adriana gets started, can you see the presentation all right on screen? Is it large enough? Great. Okay, thank you so much, Anne, without an E. Um, so yeah, this is beautiful Buckhorn, as you're all well aware. Um, and this is the report back from Charlotte Lake. So next slide, please. So for those of you who didn't partake in the exchange yourselves, there's a lot of different pieces that go into putting it all together. So we're gonna run through really from start to finish. So the first slide here really encompasses like what we did before our visit to prepare. Like anyone going on a road trip, uh, like what do you do to prepare? So we just recap that because that's an important observation to take into account. So our observations were that it's a touristy town um, on the Lake Canal system that's entirely used for recreation. Uh, it's a number of similar towns on the Trent Severn system. Uh, and in, for some of us, we expected it to be a bit more tourist oriented. However, I do wanna note this, it's in the notes here, but also up front that, again, we all know with COVID, our timelines kept moving for all sorts of different activities. So the majority of our visitors uh, came under the radar uh, in October. So we want to acknowledge that we did miss that peak tour in season. Um, however, you know, I think it's still really valuable to have a sense of the experience in that off season. because It's so important in tourism to be considering how to uh, improve that off season experience. So I think this is all still extremely valid. Uh, and luckily, it wasn't prime bug season, so I'm sure if I was there now, <laughs> it would be a much different story, but no bugs, uh, just beautiful fall foliage. Um, so again, we were there in October. Uh, we used a lot of online research. Uh, Google results showed, again, a heavy emphasis on outdoor activities, boating, and water sports. Uh, Wikipedia presented like it as a full service community. Again, strong focus on tourism, cottaging, and the waterway. Uh, just to give you a highlight of some of the sites that did catch our attention, uh, the Kawartha's Northumberland.ca web website was really well done and informative and was a really valuable resource. The Buckhorn District Tourist, <laughs> Tourist Association Welcome Center and website. Uh, for me, I did the website first, uh, but I know folks went to the Welcome Center and we'll talk a bit more about that later on um, and had a really positive experience over the phone and in person. I don't know if she's on here today, but Linda was particularly helpful and was very keen about the community. So again, kudos to folks actually meeting and greeting with the visitors. Buckhorn.ca, Google Maps were all very helpful, TripAdvisor and the Heart of the Quarters. Um, so again, folks were looking for art festivals, studio tours, that something that maybe they could tie into their trip up to Buckhorn, but unfortunately at that time of year, most of those events had wrapped up. Uh, next slide, please. So now we get to Buckhorn. We've done our research. We've filled our tank with gas. And after about a five minute drive, we were to pull over and kind of write down our instant first impressions. So again, we found it was very attractive, clean, well-tended properties. Again, that's factored into kind of coming in and going around. Uh, lots of flowers, lush greenery, 
the canal, the waterway really stands out again as a major part of the town scene. Uh, some major features um, were somewhat removed from the town center. So for example, the large community center. Um, there were lots of business in the, businesses in the village uh, and few houses were actually visible. Uh, the highway to Buckhorn was busier on Monday than people expected, uh, but it was a much slower pace in the actual downtown. Buckhorn is similar to Charlotte Lake, we observed, in that stores and services uh, were not all in the town center, but are, are on the outside or the kind of exterior highways and county roads that bring you in. So there are some larger um, organizations out there, I believe a larger grocery store, uh, bakery. All in all, we thought it was a very picturesque, but a bit smaller than we envisioned. Next slide, please. Just making sure my slides match up over here. So we're finally there, we're entering the community. Personally, I had to turn around and come back. I was like, oh, I missed it. I missed my turn. Um, but that's, you know, we were all coming from different directions, which is pretty interesting. And maybe I just don't have the best navigation personally. Um, but visitors agreed that there was a bit of limited directional signage all, all in all. Um, and again, the highway was quite busy. So the bridge entrance over the waterway was very appealing with the lampposts and the banners and flags. Um, the other two entrances didn't really have as sufficient signage in comparison, um, maybe because they're not major entrances. Um, so we would overall suggest improved signage. There were some mixed reviews about the planters on the rock outcrops on the various kind of ways into town. Um, part of our team thought they were really nice. <coughs> Others thought they were lacking color and like a little bit of purpose. We weren't really sure how to connect them. Um, all in all, we would say that there might be an opportunity to spruce these elements up or add a bit of a story there, or perhaps make it like a tour. Definitely an opportunity because there's something to start with. And they caught our eye. Um, again, I kind of reiterated this about signage, but it was a bit confusing uh, what direction you were going. <laughs> um, next slide, please. So you're also tasked with, you know, then taking a drive around and really per perusing the housing and residential areas, um, because not only is the first impressions important for, you know, tourism, but it's also important for attracting uh, you know, new residents, uh, workers, et cetera. So we take into account the housing and residential areas. So our main takeaways were that it was you know, really heavy, heavily forested, um, attractive, well cared for homes that can be seen kind of nestled amongst the trees. Um, there wasn't really a lot of obvious new construction or any large apartment buildings that we took note of. Uh, we also didn't take note of any retirement housing or you know low or rental low cost rental properties um, we noticed that the quality of the sidewalks for mobility access was good in the main kind of drag of town especially on the one side of the street this kind of repeats throughout we, we will talk about how there isn't one on the other side um, that could be old news though um, again the downtown area was very walkable otherwise as we mentioned with there be businesses outside of the downtown core, you definitely need a vehicle to get around. Uh, the parks and the green spaces were very prevalent and well-groomed, really, really quite nice to, to stroll through. And the road conditions were generally very good. All right, Anne's on it. Thanks, Anne. In terms of our awareness of local government services, uh, the municipal offices were a little far removed from the town center, but they were easy to locate. Uh, Based on a lot of our timing, and personally, I didn't stop at the township office. Um, the Tourist Welcome Center, again, conveniently located and helpful with a lot of good local brochures and information. And the restaurants and general store also had brochures. So you can tell that everyone is kind of on board with directing to other businesses. So this is just a side note, but I know having worked at a municipal office during COVID, um, a lot of them weren't open, so I'm wondering if your tourism office kind of served as the main go-to for all sorts of uh, local queries. Um, but again, they seem to have a really positive attitude and were super helpful. And so I just want to reiterate that, that that leaves a really a lasting impression. So now we're on education. 
Again, this would be you know, an important factor for new families, young families coming to the area. Uh, we noticed that there was one public elementary school in the area. No, we didn't notice a high school. Um, I think we're assuming that the kids are bused to Peterborough or that is true. Um, that's just not information I took in my, myself. Um, and this is a very typical problem, a rural problem with students needing to be bused out to the larger communities. Um, and we noticed the elementary school and daycare were, sorry, were well located and attractive. And I know some folks went into in and around the daycare uh, and noticed that they had really great play structures as well. Uh, I think just an observation after talking to some locals that there was a threat to close the school entirely a few years ago, but enrollment has increased. So that's probably a positive sign and, and knowing again how so many uh, folks are migrating to more rural areas, um, you could need a new school, I'm not sure. So now we'll move on to again, really important services for that any type of group migrating or again, appealing to younger families and, and retirees, the health, social and emergency services. Uh, so we noticed the a really nice medical center and pharmacy um, just kind of off one of the main streets. Um, didn't notice any dental, chiropractor, or other health clinic services, like standalone services uh, anywhere else. In terms of emergency services, we noticed that the police were centrally located in the town um, and noted that the city of Peterborough ambulance is in town or at least about half an hour away. And that the fire department is housed in the, with the township office and was very easy to locate. Again, once you kind of take that main road out past the school, um, but we didn't see an ambulance base or a hospital. In terms of social services and clubs, uh, there was no evidence of service clubs meeting in the area. Again, we can kind of put an asterisk beside certain uh, observations that maybe would be different if it weren't COVID, um, but we didn't really notice them identified on sides entering the town either. Um, the large community center had a lot of really active volunteer programs by the looks of it, and was just a really impressive space uh, in terms of both the outdoor rinks and then the connection to the larger indoor buildings, really impressive. Um, we think that there might be a satellite office um, that offers some community supports and services coming from Peterborough, uh, but we didn't really see a presence of it. And this is usually the stuff we all find a little bit more exciting is that stuff that we can all maybe go and put a coat of paint on. Um, it's the downtown appearance. And Karen would probably preface this by saying, it's only one piece of the puzzle, and that's true. Um, but you know, we, we can all really relate to the downtown appearance. So the streets again in really good condition, the signage was consistent with the look and feel like that. The very initial slide that we showed with the, that wooden um, engraved buckhorn sign, you saw more of that throughout the downtown and just on your way in. Um, it would be helpful. I know we're kind of jumping around, but it would be helpful to have a crosswalk for safety and accessibility. We wanted to highlight that. Um, sidewalks are excellent and new where they existed, as I kind of mentioned before. One major observation we all had was just on the one side, it looks brand new and it was funded. So we can kind of understand that maybe we're hoping for funding for the next one. Um, so hopefully this report helps with that. Definitely nice to have two sidewalks and a crosswalk to get to the other one, encourage um, traveling to the other side of the street. Um, there appeared to be lots of parking. Again, we were there in the off season, but we also noticed uh, directions to and a larger lot, just kind of up the hill a little bit on your way out, which is very interesting. We were very curious about that. So I'm sure we'll discuss that in more detail. Um, again, amazing to discover public washrooms that were clean and accessible. Uh, the parks, the landscaping and the floral baskets were all really well maintained and just lovely that they're there. Uh, again, the downtown, very walkable. Something that we also found surprising was the presence of a tattoo parlor with really large frontage right in the downtown. So again, would love to know the story there. Um, I didn't go check it out. I wasn't really in the mood, but um, maybe they're world renowned. I'm not sure I don't watch any like tattoo shows on TLC, but maybe they're famous. Uh, and again, in terms of downtown appearance, street furniture, there were plenty of benches and they were well-placed. Um, so again, overall, very tourist oriented. There were retail businesses, parks, picnic tables, and the washrooms. 
just some lovely photos that we took again, considering this was October. I mean, those flower baskets have been given a lot of love um, and just really nice, unique displays. So, you know, that really stands out and, and leaves a really great sense of place and, and an impression when we, when we leave. In terms of the retail and services, so a good mix of businesses, there were no large chains in the downtown. Um, we received good customer service overall with just a couple of exceptions where staff were unfriendly or unhelpful. The presence of a bakery and a coffee shop was welcomed, of course. We love a little sweet treat after a few hours on the road. We were pleased to see a home decor store in the downtown. Again, it's nice to have some variety and again, you know, that's somewhere for people to shop uh, for their cottage. The Buckhorn Canoe Company was very distinct and appealing. Again, really appeals to the folks in our group who are there for outdoor adventure. Because, of course, I should have mentioned some of us were there for outdoor home decor. <laughs> but um, it looked like there was limited to no commercial vacancies, um, which is great on the one hand, but on the opposite, it's hard to encourage new business development if there isn't anywhere for them to go. Signage depicting the local businesses pictured here uh, was prominent and attractive. It was a bit busy. Uh, again, it focused on a lot of services for full and part-time residents. Stores were generally accessible. So there were ramps and automatic doors, which is actually you know, quite impressive for a community of this size in our, in our perspective. Uh, and the, local, the winery sold some local products. Um, so again, we're just kind of throwing thoughts in here as well. Like, is there an opportunity for a broader shop local program? Just planting seeds as we go. And uh, the restaurants, this is my area of expertise. Um, the local food was not exact, exactly prominent in the restaurants, uh, the grocery store or retail, which was a bit surprising as there's you know a big bear, berry farm that seemed to be quite the local attraction, um, but all in all, a really good selection of restaurants for the size of the community. Also kind of bucketed onto this slide in terms of professional services, um, the only visible professional service was the real estate company. Uh, we didn't notice salons or barber shops. I'm gonna take a sip of water here. I was just thinking about food and drink and local wine, so it's almost five o'clock. Okay, so we're on the industry slide now. So we didn't notice any large industries, definitely not in the downtown. Um, the tourism services and related businesses seem to be the main employers. Uh, we did keep a lookout for industries, um, but really didn't see any one big employer. Um, the most obvious would be the Trent Severn Waterway, um, but there was noticeable kind of property and signage in terms of a gravel and landscaping materials company. So I would say, you know, when we when we check our boxes, we would say that the industry there was natural resources. Why is community mobility? So again, something we're really passionate about from, um, we're quite lucky having come from Charter Lake that went through a recent um, downtown infrastructure project. So, you know, we can appreciate um, it takes time to balance sidewalks on both sides of the street. But in terms of our kind of um, perception of the active transportation, example, cycling lanes on the street, um, we saw that limited cycling paths coming into or out of the village, and we didn't necessarily see dedicated cycling lanes. However, we do realize that this can be challenging because of a waterway, but you know, all the same, a lot of us are quite into biking. Um, so that stood out to us. If it was a different group, it might be something alternative. So just, I guess, take this all with a grain of salt that we would personally like to see some more biking awareness. Um, what was lovely is the access to hiking trails in nearby provincial parks. Um, and again, you're on the right track having side by side, a really nice new sidewalk. Um, hopefully that can be extended to another side. Um, we kind of all noted that we could see that there would be congestion during the peak tourist seasons. Um, but again, it seemed like there was ample parking. Um, of course, for a community this size, no public transportation seemed to be available. Let's go. And tourism. So we're in that prime season right now. So I'm sure there's a lot that might go off here. 
and maybe there's more to add. So again, looking forward to the discussion. But tourism seemed to be the center of everything going on in the downtown. Uh, again, really started with that very helpful, pleasant woman that was working, offered so much information and prompting, and it was a pleasure to visit. Um, and I'd also heard great things about um, kind of like the souvenirs and different takeaways from within that tourism center. So it sets a really great impression. Um, so keep funding it. Uh, <laughs> um, again, good advertising online uh, with the online research. So a great online presence. Um, some of the main attractions that stood out to us through that research and our visit was the art gallery. People really enjoyed that. I'm um, taking a stop and climbing up into the Adam and Eve rocks, like very cool. Um, nearby First Nations and provincial parks also is really important to some of our visitors. Um, however, signage seemed to be a little bit limited to actually direct to some of these attractions. In some cases, it was quite small, um, or maybe there's just not really a, a connection between all the different places cross promoting one another perhaps uh, of course the trent severn waterway the historic site is a huge draw all the big lakes in the area arts and crafts festivals that again we were maybe just we just missed um, but we took note for later so that was great um, the buck brand we thought was really well utilized and there's probably more opportunity there and again can't say this enough how impressive it is to have public washrooms available I'm sure it took a lot to get that during, especially during COVID, but keep it up because <laughs> that goes a long way for people being able to spend time, spend more than a few hours. Um, oh, and we also, it might be on another slide, but uh, really enjoyed the military remembrance uh, wall uh, as well, just outside, I believe, of the lock, that nice sitting area. Okay, so next slide on tourism. Uh, it's in relation to what we noticed in terms of accommodations. Um, I'm sure you've heard this before, but of course it seems there's a need for more short-term accommodation. We may have wanted to spend the night if there had been more options in the off season or maybe pricing as well. But again, those are bigger challenges than we can solve today. Um, available accommodations in immediate Buckhorn area appear to be mainly fishing type lodges or cottages, uh, which often have multi-day minimum stays. Um, there could be more B&Bs. Uh, we didn't notice a large hotel or conference accommodation, but there seemed to be one large luxury hotel on the lake. There are our favorite little washrooms right there. Okay, entertainment. So again, the community center, excellent with eight separate barns for festival presentations and sports areas. It's a really precise number, but if we're wrong, apologies. Uh, the skating rink and pickleball, also really highly sought after um, depending on the season uh, however i think a local noted that the pickleball court can be hazardous when it's humid um, like really hot and humid um, so again just food for thought and i don't know if that just means like the competition gets hot actually it's hard to say what that means but no i'm assuming it gets a little slick um, there was a good beach not far from the community center with ample parking uh, which made a lot of sense. I personally was walking around the downtown and it's like, oh, no one can swim here. Kids can't frolic here. However, you might not want that with boats coming in and out. So it was great to know that there has been uh, investment and, and a setup of a quality beach just outside of that kind of high, high traffic area. So it really kind of actually extends your entire tourism offer. Uh, limited recreation and entertainment options for young kids. Um, Community facilities appeared to be accessible, so thumbs up. And apparently the pub had live entertainment or has live entertainment. Uh, again, our timing was just a little off. Most of us were there during the daytime. Um, again, we saw people playing pickleball and using, and, and they, they raved about the outdoor rink in the wintertime. So again, I think that is pretty impressive. I think we all did, sorry. I'm speaking on behalf of everyone. <laughs> but I did stop and take some pictures and tried to get actually some inspiration to bring back to Charlotte Lake for these types of ways to make one facility work for multiple seasons. So you should be proud. Okay, and we're on the last one of the entertainment. Uh, so again, for all other groups, the community seems well suited uh, and provides opportunities for entertainment and recreation year round like golfing, pickleball, cross country skiing, snowmobiling, and other recreation activities. So it seems like there is still a decent offering in the off season. Uh, 
We noticed that there was a, an event, Rock the Locks, in late August. Um, maybe there were still signs up, I'm not sure. Uh, family activities are offered by the local farms, uh, which seems like, again, an opportunity to maybe connect with those local farms more and cross promote or maybe share spaces and help amplify the whole offering. Maybe have some farmers markets. I'm here, they're coming back. Um, again, just we think generally just like with our own region, opportunities for more kind of structured, collaborative, shoulder season activities. In terms of culture and heritage that we took note of, again, high praise for the gallery on the lake. It was absolutely excellent. There are other galleries in the area and an annual art festival. Uh, again, having the presence of the First Nation Cultural Center and even I believe the naming of, oh, this is on the next slide. Uh, uh, within the past few years, a park was renamed um, as well. So that's really, really positive. Uh, the studio tour of, of the area was advertised. We didn't notice any like significant built heritage buildings per se or heritage plaques um, to commemorate those. But there could be an opportunity there if those buildings exist or types of uh, structures. Uh, we did notice a few churches that were older, but they were well cared for. Um, and there could be more exploita exploitation of local history. Um, that's just a, we don't mean that, but we mean, you know, maybe there's an opportunity to dig into um, the history of some businesses, locations, uh, installments, and, you know, turn that into a walking tour, showcase the heritage a bit more. Because um, boaters are probably interested in that when they want to stretch their legs for a few hours. Uh, the deer statue in the small park coming into Buckhorn gave a great introduction to the town. Uh, and they had a very nice area adjacent to Lock 31 that had a beautiful wall dedicated to the service armed forces members that have lost their lives and lots of seating to sit and reflect. So again, I, we all really took notice of that and, and thought that was something really inspiring and lovely to have. So in terms of environmental sustainability, uh, we didn't really notice anything good or bad per se. Um, but this isn't usually a really dominant feature in small towns because we know how the kind of garbage and recycling systems work as well. Uh, didn't notice any recycling containers out and about, but again, some of that might've been tucked away because peak season was over. Um, personally, you know, uh, if you can have that stuff during peak season, I think it would be fantastic. Um, and does the municipality have any type of waste reduction, reuse, recycle program in place? So kind of just still some questions there um, that definitely, you know, our first impressions we took notice. And I can only assume, again, visitors take notice of as well when they're trying to leave a good footprint when they're visiting your town. So from the handful of residents that we spoke with, uh, they showed enthusiasm for their community and all of its activities. Um, some were very enthusiastic about the Montreal smoked meat poutine. Uh, you gotta, you gotta try that. Um, and apparently it was very good. How could it not be? But uh, the butter tart tour of the area, um, also that's such a lovely combination. Uh, the residents were generally positive and helpful uh, in our interactions. The welcome center again, shocked that it's entirely run by volunteers that are so incredibly helpful. Um, and the head of the pickleball club, was very knowledgeable and helpful about the club and the recreation in the community. So the fact that folks stopped and took time to answer our questions, um, you know, left a really nice impression. Uh, we did sense pride in their town. Um, seemed that they're maybe a little tired from the hectic pace of the summer months. We understand that. Uh, and we were asked where we were staying, but explained it was just a day trip. All right. So using our senses is kind of an interesting part of the survey. Um, but when you think about it, like, yeah, like these Adam and Eve's rocks were so cool, like something so rare and you actually get up there, the fresh air that you have, you feel like you discovered it, but you, you, know, you didn't. Um, the bronze buckhorn deer, again, really, really stands out. Uh, the greenery uh, in and around the canal. And again, with the, the lush greenery and forest, like forested feeling of where all the houses were tucked into as well. And just getting to Buckhorn, it was like driving through a forest. Uh, not everything's positive though. We did have someone note that the muffin at the local bakery for the taste buds was a little bit pricey. Um, there were a few other comments throughout that aren't necessarily posted here, but um, the local bakery was an example of 
um, one of the institutions that wasn't exactly the most like customer service oriented. Um, but again, they might just be tired from doing so many butter tart tour tastings. I'm not sure, but maybe they need a little extra support or encouragement in that regard. Um, again, lots of trees as well as water to keep the air clean. So like, it just was so refreshing sitting anywhere in the town. Um, it was really quiet, um, like compared to where we're coming from. Uh, uh, like transports will drive through the main street while you're sitting having coffee at that cafe. There was no like type of noise pollution once you're actually in, in the downtown of Buckhorn, which is really nice. Um, the flowers were lovely. Uh, folks tried out the country market with the award-winning tarts. Um, they didn't disappoint. So there's kind of mixed reviews, I guess, if this is the same market in terms of the conversations with the owner. So I guess it goes, it's the luck of the draw, I suppose. Uh, again, the waterway coming in over the bridge is just absolutely postcard worthy um, and you know, kind of wished it was maybe a bit more walkable up at that bridge area, but it does seem like it's part of a pretty fast moving highway. Uh, again, it was really quiet, no tractor trailers. And personally, the pizza shop had a lot of varieties, very interesting choices of pizza. Uh, for me, I was looking for something more casual. So it was nice to have those options. In, uh, to balance out the predominant like sit down places. So after the visit, so that's kind of the summary of everything we were experiencing there. So when we kind of come back and reflect and complete our survey, in what ways was the community different? So it was more attractive than expected without any tacky tourist traps. Uh, this would be a good place for an active senior to retire. Nice layout, good mild activities. What they remembered the most were the Adam and Eve stones and the bronze buck. Again, the welcoming people, the canal lock right in the downtown is an outstanding feature. What would bring us back is to spend more time in the parks. We thought it would be a bit bigger and more retail stores geared towards tourism. Again, that's maybe where the tattoo shop comes in. <laughs> Um, but I didn't go inside. I don't know what, if they're selling mugs and, and magnets in there. Um, again, the Trent Waterway lifted boat traffic likely. Sorry, I'm running limited boat traffic. Again, it was just quiet, I suppose, with the waterway at that time of year. Most people have closed their cottages. And again, really like the monument with the war heroes. So I think, like in general, our sense is like there's some great history here. How can we maybe continue this on in different areas of the downtown? Um, again, lots of attractive housing on the streets off the main street. Again, lots of trees. And we will visit again. I didn't get my butter tart, so I will be back. Again, some top features that we want to note and celebrate and help you to celebrate. Again, is the culture that, again, a lot is probably very volunteer oriented. Uh, library, the galleries, the Wall of Heroes Monument, the studio tours. Uh, the recreation again that impressive community center access to parks and parks within within the town the clean portable public washrooms with a wheelchair accessible option uh, the availability of the food like dining choices um, the location again you have the waterway the canal the canadian shield uh, the strong branding commitment to the buck branding and again just really clean friendly and hospitable community And highlight it here are again from our from our perspective so and this was again based in October so we know so much has changed and maybe is in the works but some potential opportunities for buckhorn to consider um, would be increasing the number of water-based activities with an emphasis on younger children so again trying to bring families into the downtown a bit more or perhaps the beach area uh, the potential for kayak rentals Again, we'll asterisk if some of these things do exist, just not in the off season. Uh, capitalize on the boat and the potential park traffic. Again, you're, it comes, but maybe there's more ways to really capitalize on that and collaborate and cross promote. Uh, consider, consideration of cycling trails and walking paths or signage encouraging biking and bike safety. Better and more consistent signage to the main attractions. Uh, perhaps consider a shop and eat local program. Again, there's so many different dining establishments that have praiseworthy food and local food producers 
perhaps there could be, again, ways to come together a bit more. An increased focus, again, on heritage and the indigenous origins. So again, community walking tours or historical walking tours, more local advertising of these types of um, historical significant areas. Uh, and Buckhorn has a few strong anchor attractions, which could be enhanced by targeted business development. So you could consider mini putt and other family friendly activities, something that you might just be able to put together and take apart when the season's over. Uh, a reuse, a thrift store, an antique shop, specialty shops in that downtown core. This is a big one we know, but of course, accommodations that may be more short term or, or maybe smaller groups that might not be interested in, in a fishing lodge. Um, and again, local food and local products, like really putting some thought behind that and coming together with those producers and seeing how everyone can support each other and put buckhorn on the map for, for those amazing dining options and, and locally produced products. And biggest challenges, and I mean, I'm sure you would add more to this list because uh, that's how it feels for sure. And it changes every day. If some biggest challenges we assume facing Buckhorn based on our perspective was becoming a suburb of Peterborough. Um, you're far, um, but not that far. And there's a main highway. Um, so just becoming a suburb and perhaps, you know, there's all the pitfalls of what that kind of development can cause to a small town. Uh, overwhelming traffic during tourist season. I, again, I want to hear about that because I saw a massive parking lot and wondered how that worked. Um, again, Cyclists are probably going to come. So the and again, we were there. A lot of us walking around. We got out and walked around. So that's safety for pedestrians, pedestrians and cyclists. Um, layout, as we understand, constricted by the topography and the water. So there are, of course, a lot of things we just can't control. Beautiful things we can't control, uh, but getting creative, perhaps. Um, again, lack of short-term accommodation. Uh, real estate. This can in, in, encompass, you know, a lack of housing in general, or again, that affordable housing. Uh, keeping younger people in the area might be a challenge um, that you've perhaps experienced for a long time or, or may start to experience, but, you know, challenges in, like improving job and housing opportunities, recruitment and retention. Again, these are kind of significant challenges. Uh, and a, probably a small winter population in that quiet shoulder winter season. Actually, I would add something to that, that a challenge could be stem back to the sustainable environmental sustainability side of things. Like there, there could be limits in terms of what you can do in terms of your recycling and, and waste program. But I, I encourage you to fight the good fight. And so I guess lastly, one of our final slides here, quick wins, advice to consider implementing right away, because it's just that easy. Uh, again, planning, you could start doing some planning and thinking about cycle paths. Uh, Additional sidewalk, I don't know. We're really, we're really rooting for you to get an additional sidewalk and have them on both sides of the street and that pedestrian crossing somewhat midway at a safe point to that main street. Um, improved signage from the approach uh, on the, I'm gonna say east, but on the approach in probably from all angles, why not? Uh, the entrance into the downtown wasn't like, no real signage markers directing you to the downtown. You from that kind of four-way um, set of lights. And again, promoting the shoulder season, spring and fall, use existing organization and activities and expand on those. That's easy enough to start doing right away, isn't it? <laughs> and so it wasn't just that. Again, we took a lot away from, from our experience with Buckhorn, although we're there to also, you know, make suggestions. You know, there's also so much positive that we took away from our experience um, that, you know, we could do a better job of treasuring our trees, that the buckhorn homes are attractive. They're in the forest and the forest comes right into the town. You know, preserve that, we're jealous. Um, that we could perhaps in, try to establish a Charlotte Lake brand. Um, you know, you guys have the buck thing going on, um, but our name is the name of a lake. Um, so this can be challenging, not knowing the meaning of certain things or the meaning being, yeah, anyway, 
So uh, again, might require some cooperation with our business groups uh, and uh, the revitalization initiative. Um, it would be nice to see a small wall dedicated to our local war heroes. Uh, and of course that could be extended to other folks that we want to remember. Uh, increased promotion of, your, of our water and lakeside community. So our beaches and, and the trails and activities uh, make it easier to navigate the procedures to open a business in our township. I'm not sure if someone just threw that in there, but <laughs> I, I don't have a lot I can add to that one. Um, maybe maybe Linda at the tourism center in, was encouraging people to open business. So I'm not sure, but I think you've got someone special with Linda. Um, and incorporate a welcome center concept in our town um, and have nicer public washrooms, even if they're porta potties, that could be something that Charlotte Lake could add to our tourism offering. That is the end of our 29 page report with a little bit of extra commentary from me, but Karen <laughs> knew I would do that. Well, thanks for, thanks very much, Adriana, and, and everybody from uh, the Charbot Lake uh, community in, in uh, taking the time to uh, uh, and the opportunity for us to be able to hear uh, your comments and your vision of uh, what you see. Um, I'm going to open it up to everybody in a minute here. Uh, just uh, for the Charlotte Lake, Lake people, um, we we actually have a lot of things that you're on there planned. I know we had the same thing. We talked uh, uh, to your group as well. Uh, certainly, the the uh, sidewalks well noted as is the the uh, crossing areas and uh, cycle paths. Uh, those are, are things we've been uh, looking towards. And the signage thing is actually, as is commonly typical, there's the two levels of government, and so things get held up in one capacity and not another uh and so we're we're waiting to see where where uh where that goes uh it was great to hear the positives uh, and certainly the community thinking that the uh, yeah i think most of us that live up here it is literally a bunch of lakes all intermingled and you try to drive in and around them that's what it is and, and although buckhorn is small the population in the area is actually not that small we have a whole whack of subdivisions off side roads that people live in um so they don't all come here because Peterborough, Lakefield, and Bridge North are all very close by. So uh, we have traditionally just had a few things then for people on the waterway. That's not unlike Sharper Lake in some some capacities. So Adriana, thank you. Uh, I think I've got 21, 22 points written down here from just what you're saying as we all try to, to learn and comment, but maybe, uh, before some of our, our, our folks have to leave, uh, I don't know if Greg or if uh, Rain is still on, because I don't see her. Maybe start with Greg. Did you have any comments uh, in regards to the presentation today or thoughts on some of the items? Uh, excellent presentation and uh, very, very helpful. It was a good summary, I think, for us to be able to see and hear some of the, the things. Uh, actually, um, yeah, I, I, I come away actually a little bit more encouraged uh, we, we see a little bit uh, maybe more underneath some stuff than you do. So uh, it was nice to be able to uh, get a, a good overview and a summary again uh, for first eyes on a place and on a location. So that was really good, really helpful. And I think the uh, the quick, uh, those quick uh, gains that you mentioned towards the end, I think, you know, I think those are things that we've been slowly working on, but they, they help confirm uh, you know, some of the direction we're looking at, but I, I thought it was an excellent presentation, very, very helpful and a, a, a good overview for us. And um, yeah, I, I'm really, really pumped about, uh, you, you kind of looked at Buckhorn specifically, but uh, yeah, I go through that town quite often and uh, you've helped me lift my eyes a little bit, uh, a little bit higher. So, and I have yet to visit the Adam and Eve uh, rock there. I, I can never find it when I go by there. So uh Anyway, that's my bad. Thank you for a good presentation. Thanks, Greg. It, it, Rain, are you still there or she may already be gone as possible? I don't know. Okay, she's gone. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Armstrong, did you want to, to uh, have an opportunity to say something? Carol? Well, first of all, uh, also, yeah, also echo what Greg said. A terrific presentation and very thorough. And thanks for taking the time to to put it all together. I know that is a lot of work that Dave and Christine did. Um, yeah, what's interesting for me is things that I think each of us individually on our team might have thought were priorities 
didn't come up for you. <laughs> and so as a visitor, you really do have a different um, eye to uh, what's what's good, what's bad, what you like, what you don't. And I, for me, it sort of sorts out what rises to the top of the most important things we should be. And, you know, I think you said them where it's sidewalks, um, cycling paths. Uh, we do have a, an open space master plan uh, consulting report being done right now. And I think that will help us a lot with the active living, you know, cycling paths, walking paths, sidewalks, et cetera. Um, so, you know, hopefully that can fold into the study that they do. Um, what else? I to hear you talk about our washrooms because washrooms and garbage are two things that you absolutely need in an area for visitors that you think, you know, you sort of ignore. Um, but love the idea about recycling containers. That's also a quick win, I think. So I wrote that one down. So I, I won't continue because I'm just repeating a lot of the things that you said. But again, I think what it really did for me was, you know, prioritize what's important. You know, what are the vital few things from the perspective of someone else coming into our community? So thank you for that. Thanks, Carol. Uh, anybody else? Jerry, uh, Jerry, did you want to chime in? And then Gabby after Jerry. Um, yeah, so for me, for me, everything that you talked about is all the things that I would like to see improved, uh, for sure. Uh, like, I definitely think cycling is huge. Uh, it, it offers a lot, um, just like Sharver Char Lake has the rail trail there. I know for a fact, a, a good friend of mine that rides, he rode through there not the other day. So, um, again, I think those are all things that we need to improve on here in Buckhorn. Um, accommodation too is another one and uh, it's it's nice that uh, a visitor you know like yourselves have come in and just reaffirmed that those are the things that we need to start focusing our uh, our plans on we obviously have a beautiful community I mean it but it's very eye appealing when you walk in it's just uh, we need we need some more infrastructure to to balance out that beauty so thank you for that I appreciate uh, the criticisms and 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 the positivity of the presentation so Thank you again. Thanks, Jerry. I appreciate that. Um, Gabby? Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. I, uh, and it's a very rich presentation, and I do think we should uh, set up some time in a future meeting to unpack everything. Because if you take them now, it was, it's a lot, but if we take them one by one, we're gonna find uh, clear uh, ways like short-term accommodation, but we, we might find some just starting of a new of a new road for economic development in some of those. It's it's really worth spending some time as a as a team and going through through everything again one by one and discussing. Appreciate that, Gabby. I, we'll definitely do that. I think um, I'll let everybody else speak. I, I have I have some uh, clear sort of uh, views from some of the things that we've been heard today, and I think it, it is it does uh, allow us to reflect through a different uh, lens or lenses. Uh, and I definitely appreciate that because we, we've been tending to do to work towards a few things, and obviously trying to help our local local uh, business group from a connective connectivity standpoint. But I, I do see that that vision part. Uh, what you see on the way in is not always what we see when we see it every day. So I do appreciate that very much. Um, I don't know if anybody else want to comment. John, I know Christine will comment at the end here. I didn't know, John, did you want to say anything? You were at the other one. Yeah, no, it was uh, very informative. It was nice to see. Uh, we don't always see it because it's right in front of us, but to get a fresh perspective from uh, visitors is always uh, very interesting. And like Greg, I've never seen the, the rocks. I've been down the road several times, but there again, there's probably, I can't find them. But, you know, it was a good presentation. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it almost makes me want to go to Buckhorn and just not uh, run to the pizza store or the pizza shop and uh, actually stop and see something else. No, it was very nice. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, Chris, you said you had, uh, Christine had something, then, then Lynn after that. Go ahead, Chris. Again, thank you uh, very much. Uh, we know how difficult 
it is to do all the prep work and then take the the visit and then you know just try and absorb everything and then the back end and i think you did an excellent job thank you very much we appreciate that um a couple of things i won't repeat what everybody else said i was uh surprised that you had a quiet visit i go to buckhorn i'm not even near buckhorn i'm a an hour drive i'm up in the very north end of the municipality and i'm the opposite i'm always stunned at how crazy the traffic is with the quarry trucks and the um the construction vehicles and how they spin around that corner you know the very peaceful little bench that you had the very first picture you had with the buckhorn sign and you said look how quaint and peaceful i am frightened to sit at that bench because of the speed and the size of the vehicles that do come around there so it must have been just a moment in time that you were able to enjoy that peace and quiet um, the other thing is, is I, I reflect that we have been so focused on the park, on getting Odenang Park up, and I um, actually didn't realize that the sign is even there right now, that the, it says uh, Heart of the Community, because that must be relatively new. It wasn't there, so happy to see that. But we have, uh, you know, because our focus and our budget and everything's been on the, the park and the center park, we know that the signage is very important from all directions it's on our hit list it just sort of keeps getting moved forward because we do know it's going to be a very lengthy process in order to come up with the design the approvals and the costing so it just sort of keeps kind of moving down on the priority but it reminds us that it is a priority it really is despite the fact that we do know because it is a beautiful area people are going to come in anyways um, and word of mouth, but it is nice to have a welcoming um, uh, signs coming into the community. But again, I, I did want to thank you that we, we, we know that safety is a priority, so the sidewalks and the, the walkways is important. The other thing to note is you mentioned accommodations, and one of the um, accommodations is actually for sale, the, the Cody Inn. It is for sale right now, which is why there wasn't accommodations. and when you came and it here we are still with it up for sale and the uh the boutique is also for sale so as cute and beautiful as it is it is for sale and interesting where the tattoo uh shop is that you made note of um it is for sale no it's not for sale but it was for sale and uh it was a uh, uh, purchased and then it has actually not been uh, used for relatively probably I'm going to say four years it hasn't been well used and so that is uh, something that we have on our EDAC is that we want to have a, a municipal um, asset acquisition plan so that when properties do come up there we do have a policy in place that we could potentially go forward to um purchase certain land like where the tattoo shop is and be able to uh, perhaps control that that property and that land for future use Thank you. is anybody else uh I, before i was going to get karen to talk a little bit here as we go forward uh derek you've joined us you you were very helpful during your own meeting did you want to add any comments today or uh anything If, if if I could interrupt, it's Patty O'Connor. Okay, yes, Patty. I didn't see you there. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm I'm in the middle of another a Zoom call here. Uh, but um, what I would like to do is thank you and your team for coming up to Charbot Lake. Bill Bill Bullock and myself visited your area and and totally fell in love with it for sure. And what I would like to do is to thank. Adriana for her report because uh, you know it's so important for us to have good representation and for Anne for uh, for her assistance always so thank you so much folks I must I must go to my other Zoom meeting and uh, hopefully we'll all meet one day okay thank you thank you so much Patty okay uh, Derek back to you and then if Anne wants to say Anne House wants to say Lynn oh sorry I th I I, I forgot. Lynn, you're next. I did say you're next. Lynn Holtz, our economic development officer. 
Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to thank Adriana for her presentation as well, and everybody who came and visited our, our little hamlet of Buckhorn. Um, I really enjoyed your presentation. I thought it was very thorough, and it certainly, I think, gave us a lot of hope that we were hitting some things uh, right on the, the nail and maybe also reaffirming some other suspicions that we had had. Um, we're kind of unique in, in the hamlet of Buckhorn because those roadways are all county. So everything we do, we always have to take it to the next level of government and, and push with them. But I think what your document provides us, like the whole EDAC committee with, is that now we know where we need to fight those battles and where we need to push. And we've got your uh, report to basically substantiate that, that this is where it's worth investing into. We did have um, some uh, crosswalks that were supposed to be painted. That's a county road that runs right through that main section, but they weren't done in time for the visits. And uh, because we're on the county schedule and not our own, there's no way for us really to determine that. But armed with your report, we can now go back to them and say this this needs to be done and maybe get something more firm from them. So it just goes to show you how uh, these reports can really help to push uh, communities forward by helping to uh, identify what they really need to be done and, and where their assets really are and where to put their resources. So thank you very much. I enjoyed that. Thanks, Lynn. Appreciate that. And uh, again, Derek, if, if you had any words to add, uh, much appreciated. Uh, just briefly, a couple of a couple of things that I sort of noted in in both presentations and and in discussions I've had since the the presentation on Monday. Um, one thing that I've noticed today, and I've also noticed here in uh, Central Frontenac, is that uh, being in a in a rural township, um, everybody's not everybody is lives in the same place, right? Not everybody lives in in the, the village or in a particular village. So there's going to be uh, differences in awareness, and there's going to be differences in priorities. Certainly, people that live in one hamlet of Central Frontenac, uh, not uncommon for them to object to. Uh, development ideas that are going to cost money uh, for the village of Charlotte Lake. Um, the other thing is, uh, even even within the village, people have different priorities. You guys raised the question of, uh, does Charlotte Lake really want tourism? It kind of seems sometimes like they're not doing everything they could do to, uh, to encourage tourism. And I uh, I mentioned that, that uh, comment to some of the members of my uh, Railway Heritage Society, which uh, which uh, runs the the Railway Heritage Park in Charlotte Lake, and uh, and they said, no, we don't want tourism. That's exactly the point. Uh, too many tourists, and uh, you know, it's what's wrecking the lakes. And uh, we'd rather just be uh, have a quiet little peaceful town here. And that's what people like. You know, people that stumble on this place, uh, they like it because it's uh, quiet and not touristy. So, uh, so there's uh, you know, different uh, different priorities. Very point, very well taken, uh, Derek. I think we had a really good discussion about that uh, at the the Charlotte Lake meeting, and and I know uh, for me, I mean, it comes down to the essence of this is in essence an argument or or a question. You know, are you the gatekeepers of land and 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 uh, maintenance workers of, of the land and, and water that we we are responsible for in our areas. And I, I do believe we are. And, you know, I, I also believe that too much of, of tourism or too much of, of, uh, of a large influx would be bad for managing that. But I think that there's a balance in there. And that's where the question lies is, you know, are you a tourist uh, town on the, the Trent Severn? Or are you a village of residents and communities that happens to be on the, 
the Trent Severn and where those efforts go is something I think communities should openly discuss and, and come up with plans for. I think that's the safest way because unfortunately for us, we live within the sphere of the GTA and we're, the, the growth prospectus, even though we're not a, an area seeded for growth, is still quite high considering the, the total population we have here. And that's just proximity to 11 million people. That's the difference uh, in, 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 in that sort of thing. Um, Anne Howes, did you want to add anything? I, I didn't give you the chance to talk earlier. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, I think my husband and I were probably the last of our group to visit. We came the weekend after Thanksgiving. Um, so I know it's a whole different ball game being out of the prime time of, of, of your season like it is here. So, um, you know, we were probably one of those people that went on about the ample parking. Plus we were there on a weekend opposed to um, being able to visit during, which is probably why we didn't see, you know, the construction vehicles. And, um, but we did notice the, the recent sidewalks and were wondered if there was more to come. Um, I am I'm, I'm surprised that the, the county controls that road that goes right through your downtown. Uh, I was surprised to hear that. I, I, it was my under. I mean, it was always my impression that the county always had way more money than, than um, you know, your your local municipalities. But I guess uh, it'll be a work in progress. Uh, really, um, yeah. I I, I I was just listening. Interesting to Derek because I was I'm born and raised here in Charlotte Lake, and I had a business for a long time, and of course it was you know predominant. Uh, successful based on the tourism right that came the location of the two provincial parks but I've always felt that there are lots and I really apologize for missing the presentation on Monday I would have loved to have have been a part of it I, I find that almost as interesting or would find it as interesting as so I'm hoping to get a recording of it but I've always felt that we've had some jewels here that have never really been capitalized on like like our local beach um, and so I, I, I'm sorry to have heard that people aren't on board with the tourism for here in Charlotte Lake. Um, I think sometimes with our aging population, that is going to be our future, uh, so that you know the businesses that are here will survive, and hopefully we will gain more. But um, yeah, I hope that uh, Buckhorn is successful in everything that that they go forth with. To to um, and we certainly will enjoy going back, and and maybe in July, opposed to. A lot of part of October. Well, thanks, Anne. I I, I do want I don't want to uh, belabor this. I know some of you have to go, and and we actually uh, have some official things to do here. We're going to have to receive the report. Uh, but before we do, um, I think Karen, I, I want to hear from you just about where we are and next uh, the next steps. I mean, we know what they are, but just so everybody kind of knows where we're at, and we will do our dil diligence at this and to sift through all of the fine information and, and try to provide our council with the best picture and snapshot of this that we can and, and uh, hopefully we can we can move forward on some of these things. Thanks, Karen. Great, thank you. And um, thanks, Adriana and team for a great presentation. Um, you know, a lot of work goes into, as as has been mentioned, uh, I think by Councillor Armstrong, you know, the amount of work that goes into, um, uh, sorry, or Christine, sorry, it might have been you. Anyway, a lot of work goes into the visit itself, you know, getting ready for the visit, the visit itself, you know, preparing the report and doing the report backs. Um, but the important thing, and I think we've talked about it here, you know, is is kind of looking at what those next steps are, right? And and Gabby kind of, um, you know, talked, uh, spoke to it, you know, about let's unpack this information now that we've heard. And, you know, I think with both groups, you know, there is that, you know, underlying question of um, who do we want to be when we grow up kind of thing. And, um, you know, it 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 begs the question of, um, you know, what is our vision for our community, and um, how do we go about identifying what that vision is, and involving the community so that it is a compromise of of um, uh, you know priorities for different groups and different people, um, but coming out at, at the other end, understanding um, you know where you're going and how you're going to get there, right? So you know this process can help you uh, define that, um, but it also involves work in um, bringing more people to the table, you know, community organizations and that sort of thing. So, um, but I think the important thing in terms of next steps. 
actually, I think one thing that's important is signage to the Adam and Eve rocks so that local people can find, the, you know, these beautiful assets in, in, in the community. Sorry, I just picked up on that from, I think, Greg and John from your comments that you need to go visit there because they really are gems. And um, um, the one thing that I do want to add is if you, either group, is looking for um, any assistance in terms of how, um, you know, how we can move forward, we have, like, like our, um, our goal is to see you move forward with some kind of an action plan, right? And um, it's been talked about how the information from both of these report backs can be used in a, um, like to validate things that you're already doing or move things up the ladder in terms of, of uh, priorities. Um, but also what can you as a group um, do, you know, the economic development teams in both, in both communities, you know, what actually can you do? And um, maybe start trying to think of a path that you can answer that question on, you know, who do we want to be and, and uh, you know, is tourism welcome as a, um, like, are we going to, you know, as, as um, was suggested in the report, uh, you know, um, the take one of the takeaways for Charbot Lake was to do some more branding, but, you know, do they want a brand because, you know, is it, do they want to attract more people? Um, and, you know, one of the things, um, I'm going to do a shameless plug, and it, it's not coming up right away, but maybe it's something that we could, um, you know, do a, a delivery on is um, we have a program. It's it's not really a program. It's a series of presentations called Community Economic Development 101. And I'm not suggesting that you guys need a 101, um, but it's just a good reminder. Um, you know, kind of like first impressions is, um, you know, of of what you actually have and some different. Um, um, ways that you could you could go as you move forward. Um, and that's something, you know, maybe it could be uh, perhaps a joint presentation between the two groups, if that was something that both teams were interested in, um, and just have that discussion. It, you know, it's kind of that broad base, where does money come from in a community? You know, um, uh, we, we always use an analogy called the leaky bucket model, um, because, you know, money is constantly leaving our communities. And so what are the ways that we can, we can um, uh, you know, what are the things that we can implement um, to retain money in, in that bucket? And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm being very simplistic, um, but you know, in, in the Charlotte Lake presentation to Buckhorn, um, you know, uh, um, it was suggested that a shop local uh, program and by you know um, support local food you know all of that that is one way that you can keep money in your community um, anyway I'm I'm digressing a little bit but there are some opportunities in terms of moving forward with action planning um, you know there is an opportunity for that kind of high level overview presentation um, uh, for CED 101 and also you know moving forward for both teams you know, if um, you feel that you would like some some um, guidance uh, from um, from us, you know, we're happy to to work with you moving forward and maybe help you uh, build a bit of a framework on how to create that action plan or what your next steps might be. So, um, you know, just um, please remember, you know, we're here. So, um, you know, ha and happy to help you kind of move to the next to the next phase. Okay, thanks very much, Karen. That's our plan. I mean, uh, I, I figured today, uh, a lot of these things, just like uh, the presentation to Sharper Lake, we we suspected, and there's other things that have given us uh, pause for reflection, I think, on where we're going. Um, but I think that uh, I would like to have the committee, even now we're going forward, certainly from the position of the chair, uh, remaining uh, involved in this type of connection, certainly with OMAFRA and, and with our Sharper Lake partners, because to be fair, they're probably 10 or 12 years ahead of us in the, the sort of uh, moving forward in your, your small nodal community sort of um, process. And so there, there's there's assistance to us and, and lessons to be learned on both sides there. Derek has, has uh, made me aware of a, a few in our discussion the other day, and I do appreciate that very much. Uh, to Adriana, uh, thank you for the presentation today, Adriana. It, it meant a lot to us. And I don't know if you had any final comments. We have to accept your uh, 
uh, your uh, presentation shortly. So before we do, I wanted to just give you a chance to speak. And then Christine, you can go ahead. Sure. I I mean it. It was uh, it was a labor for the entire group and our community is so passionate about about our local community and and as you can see the volunteerism there to hop in the car and make a long drive to try to kind of return the favor or or, or also open their perspective and um, so I thought that was really neat and hopefully these communities can continue to to check in with each other and learn from one another. Um, I'm somewhat new to the community building. Uh, realm um, but as you know you're here because it is something you're passionate about and it is rewarding but it is a long game someone reminded me of that early on when i was trying to do all of these things all at once and it's a long game so do remember that i'm sure you're all quite aware but it seems like you've got a really balanced group um, and again there's a lot to dig back into uh, and it doesn't all have to happen overnight um, but we're, we're really happy to take part and, and thank you for your patience because um, between day jobs and again lots of other volunteer commitments, a 30 page document can be a lot to put together, um, but everyone put in, rolled up their sleeves and, and this is a really good balance of everything that really stood out to us. Um, and, and that's really like I said what it is, it, it stands out as our first impression, but uh, as we know as Christine mentioned there are so many different ways that this place actually like what makes it the identity of Buckhorn. Um, so uh, I will just mention that like as Karen, Karen can provide links and access to so many resources and webinars, just things that kind of keep you learning, keep your mind open, um, like to the concept of placemaking, for example, that it's not all about the tourism, but like for your residents and people there to feel a sense of place and, and adding signage does something like that. So there's a lot of ways where it's not all just about tourism and driving that economy, but about pride in, in your uh, in your community so uh, again lean on Karen um, she's she's been so influential in my career path I now am with a regional tourism organization RTO 11 uh, which is the Ontario's Highlands uh, we kind of neighbor with I believe you are in RTO 8 um, but they're mm -hmm. also your regional tourism organizations are also another type of uh, kind of arm's length government uh, support service um, that are worth, you know, signing up for their newsletters and following as well, because there can be really great opportunities uh, to leverage their funding or, or, or learn and, and like live out some of their best practices um, in terms of doing tourism, but in like a sustainable way. So there's a lot of resources out there. and Everyone wants to do tourism the right way. Um, if that's, again, something that you want to do, um, just know that it's not all... Um, you know, we're not trying to turn any, anything into Niagara Falls. Um, there's a lot of great ways to do things in like a sustainable, long-term way. So best of luck. Thank you, Adriana. Thank you very much. And Christine, you had one quick question, I think, of Adriana. Just Sorry, I, I did, Adriana. I, the one thing that I expected that you would uh, uh, have as part of your observation is a uh, no notable playground. And um, that actually is one of our priorities for 2022 is to get a playground into Odenang Park. And um, that is actually progressing. And also um, the build of a pavilion in the park as well, because we actually uh, didn't have one. And that was one of the main reasons of building the park was to get those um, uh, pieces into the park. And just uh, wondered if you'd had observed that, thought about that, discussed any of that because they're missing. I, I won't, I'm not going to try to speak for everybody, but I think uh, the park was so lovely, like the grass was such high quality. It just seemed like a nice place to maybe put a, a, um, a blanket down and relax. I think being so close to the water, maybe it was assumed like people don't want their kids playing right there. Um, but I think there are some notes in our presentation about like the lack of um, activities for children or for families. So of course, having a bit more of a, a hub within the park would probably help check those boxes because that programming would likely be geared towards that audience. So that's just kind of like off the top of my head. But I didn't notice that it was missing. I think when I put myself back there, it was, again, you're close to the water. Um, so again, safety, right? Like if there wasn't a beach kind of going in to, like I know in Starbuck Lake, for example, it's really shallow at first. So kids can get away from you and it's, you know, you want to chase them, but it's not uh, like, I couldn't tell you how deep the water is there. So I think it, was, it didn't shock me that there wasn't a playground. Um, and there was also the parking lot and the pub. 
Um, so I, I personally didn't think it was missing, but I think of course a small play structure would probably be lovely. Um, and I, I mean, I also noticed, I think up with the recreation center in the school, there were playgrounds there, um, but I guess it's not on my radar. And maybe that's, that, maybe that's a gap in our group in that we're, well, I don't have children or you know, people don't have grandchildren that are close by or just weren't kind of on that thought process. But I'm sure if there were a bit more in our group, something like that may have come up a little bit more than it did. Okay, Th thanks Adrian, I appreciate that. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has anything else to say. Uh, before we, we start to work to close here and just to follow proper protocol, because this is our meeting, we do need to receive the report. Is that correct? Yes, please. Okay, so I need a motion from one of our members uh, to receive the report from Sharbert Lake. Councillor Armstrong, a seconder. John Wright, and a show of hands, all those in favor? Okay, and duly noted, unanimous. And uh, thank you everyone uh, from Sharbert Lake for attending today. We've got uh, lots of work to do to go back and look at some things, but uh, we'll do that. And uh, we look forward to having some other opportunities with you uh, uh, beyond what this one is. We, we, can, we can look back towards, uh, you can certainly look back towards the Buckhorn Group for support. And it sounds like we can look back to you as well. Thank you all for attending. And uh, till next time, thank you. Thanks. I know. Thank you. Okay. And our group, we just have to close our meeting out, uh, folks, once everyone's gone. Uh, so uh, our next meeting is uh, July the 11th. Uh, thank you all for participating in this. I know it was not easy for some, you know, Jerry in particular, uh, Greg had, uh, and, and Raina all had some conflicts. So I really appreciate the effort to get out today. I hope we can learn uh, from this uh, in detail. We'll go over the notes. We'll set up a meeting for it and we'll do that. But for now, I need a, a uh, someone to uh, make a motion to adjourn. Christine, seconder. John, and a show of hands. All those in favor? Thank you, everybody. And thanks all the staff that stayed around to help us today. Thank you so much. And Thank you. you. Bye, everyone. Talk thanks. soon. Bye. Bye. Take care.